All right, let's chat about a new app on the iPad Pro market, Pattern. Pattern has been designed and developed by Andy Chung, who is an ex-Facebook product designer or developer, I believe, and looks to be a tool specifically designed for mocking up low fidelity interfaces. Now, I absolutely believe that there is a space in the current market for this app to exist, but does it deliver? All right, so let's dive in and take a look at what Pattern is capable of, how it could benefit you, and whether it's worth its $4.99 price tag. All right, so here we are inside Pattern. Now I'll briefly run through the, the basics of the interface itself first. So up here on the left, you have this menu button, which basically shows you all of your artboards or your library, and you can create new artboards. And you also have this little options button up here. So what that does, it basically lets you change what a single finger will do, whether it will draw a line or whether it will erase. So I've got a race selected because I use the Apple Pencil to draw the line, which I guess is exactly what it's set up for. But if you didn't have the Apple Pencil, I would say you would want to use your finger to draw. So when you're on an interface or when you're on a page, you have the option of which kind of grid or dot system you use. So you can have none, you can have large, medium or small. And basically what this means is the precision to which your, your shapes will snap to. So if we select large here and we select a shape, so we have rectangle and it's actually filled completely with the color black. So you can select which colors you want here and you can't change from these presets at the moment, which, which I think is fine. There's, you know, there's plenty to work with here. So I'll use a gray and you see that my shape when I use two fingers actually drags and snaps to these rather large kind of dot points on the page. Now, if we undo that, so up here you have undo, redo, clear all and a share button. So if we change the dot grid to small, you will see that we actually get a lot more precision out of that shape. So we can be a lot more precise with the exact dimensions of that. Whereas we compare that directly to large, where we get these larger, rougher kind of snap points. Now, to get into the nitty gritty details of actually using this app to create interfaces. So basically we'll start with maybe a a see-through rectangle and we'll make it the size of roughly the size of an iPhone screen. Now let's say we want a maybe we want a blue menu bar so we'll put a color blue and we'll put that up the top there. Cool and then we maybe want some separating lines so we'll get some gray lines and we'll draw these across here. Cool, so now we have a list of items. Maybe we'll grab the circle, and I don't think this is gonna work very well because of the grid system. So we'll undo that, we'll change the grid to small, and we'll, no, we'll go medium. Screw that, too small. So as you can see, this is where you would kind of get these this benefit out of using these different kind of grid systems. You might already tell that Look, it's pretty, it's pretty quick and easy to do these. I actually really like the gestures. The problems come in when we say, oh, that's awful. Come on, Kel, get it together. Cool, so now we will draw the final one in here. Cool, and I'll show you the finger eraser. Not very precise, but you get the idea. Maybe we'll just go shunk across the bottom there. My biggest complaint right now with this is that we can't move or manipulate any of these objects. So I can't grab that blue bar in any way, shape or form. It is there, it is basically like ink on a page, which is great, but also incredibly frustrating when you just wanna see how a button looks on the other side, or you just wanna maybe move these down a little bit or give them a bit more breathing space, which is, which are really common things that you wanna do when you're doing interface design and it just doesn't allow you to. And that's a huge frustration for me. Another frustration is you can't zoom or move the artboard at all. So this is literally the only viewport you get. Whatever you put in here stays the same size. You can't zoom in or out or move along. So you are basically restricted by this edge and this edge and there's nothing you can do about it. But in saying that, it is a really great app for very quickly mocking up an interface like we just had and very quickly notating. So you say menu here, profile pics here, and you put like messages here or something. So look, in that sense, I think it's a great app 
for what it is, but I would, would really love to see Andy take this to the next level. And I would say his first point of call should be to make these shapes manipulable. I don't even know if that's a word. Basically, I want to be able to move these shapes around because that's the natural thing that I go to do quite often still. And I've been using this for quite a few days now. It's just really, it feels like working with paper. But I see that this has huge potential and I'm really excited to see where he takes it. All right, so there you have it. I mean, Pattern is a very simple first glimpse of what this type of app could be. And it's something that I have personally been really excited about exploring, but it doesn't quite deliver, at least not yet. So Andy Chung, if you watch this video or if you're listening, then I really look forward to seeing where you take this. But I'm really sorry to say that right now it's not worth the $4.99 and it's not an app I would recommend right now which is ridiculous by the way that we are actually saying that $4.99 is somewhat of a more expensive app I mean when you think about it that's the price of a coffee but that is the state that the app store is in especially with all of these free apps with in-app purchases really pushing the price down so I wouldn't be surprised to see this shifting, especially with regards to the iPad Pro market. But I do believe this app has a really strong future in the iPad Pro store, and I hope to see it grow into that in the future. All right, so thanks for listening, and don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked today's video. It really helps me out a whole lot. And don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. Thanks, and I will see you guys next time.